Welcome back to the TLC Perfect Pond channel. Today we're doing a little vegetation control on these two ponds behind me. I'll show you a wider shot of those in a minute. Both of these ponds here are approximately four acres each. One of them, this one, is a little smaller than that one. A couple weeks ago we came out here and did a population survey, did an electrofishing survey on these ponds to kind of get a gauge of the fish and the distribution of fishes that were in the ponds. And today we're out here to treat some of this vegetation. So when we sampled these ponds a couple weeks ago, we found a lot of fish in both ponds, a lot of sunfish, a lot of crappie, and a decent amount of largemouth bass. Both ponds were in relatively good shape, nothing really glaring. Uh, as far as problems go with the fish. We did notice a few issues as far as the health of some of the fish. They weren't quite as heavy as they should be for their length. And we had a few distribution issues that we saw once we kind of graphed all the data. We noticed there were some gaps in the size distribution of the bluegill. And most of those issues were actually seen in this pond behind me here, what we're calling pond number one, which is the larger of the two ponds. And I'll throw this figure on the screen here so we can look at the relative weight percentage of the bass that we caught. And if you look at the red line, which signifies 80% relative weight, and then the green line, which signifies 100% relative weight, we can see that a majority of the bass were kind of underweight in this pond behind me. So what that tells us is that the bass either don't have enough to eat or they're having to work too hard to find food. In ponds with a ton of vegetation, the bass have to work really hard to find food in deep cover. They end up expending just as much energy to find the food as they obtain from the food and they don't have the weight they should have. And the other issue we saw in this pond right here had to do with the bluegill distribution. So I'll throw this figure up on the screen and we can see the size class distribution of bluegill. Now the orange line on the figure there is the ideal distribution of bluegill as far as size class goes. Now you'll notice from this figure we were completely missing the five to six inch size class of bluegill. So there's an obvious gap there that we need to work on correcting. Now if we contrast the results from that slightly larger pond with this slightly smaller pond, we can see some differences here. So I'll throw the figure on the screen showing the relative weight analysis for the largemouth bass. And we can see for the most part, they are in the desired range. We had some nice healthy fish and we could pretty much tell that when we were weighing and measuring these fish. We don't really have a good picture until we put all the data together and graph it. But we can sometimes tell when we're catching the fish, when we're weighing and measuring them, that we've got a pretty healthy population. And if we look at the bluegill size class distribution in this smaller pond here compared to that larger pond, we can see that all size classes are represented very well. Unlike the larger pond where we're missing those five to six inch bluegill, we've got a nice distribution close to that orange line, which is what we're looking for. So now that we've given you a little background on these two ponds and the data we've collected so far, let's talk about the task at hand today, which is excessive vegetation in both of these ponds. And while neither of these ponds have any real big issues with surface vegetation, they both have a significant amount, too much, subsurface vegetation. So you see that stuff right there, that's called slender spike rush, and it is covering the bottom of both of these ponds. Now you might be thinking, what's wrong with having some vegetation in a pond? Isn't that a good thing? It provides cover to the smaller fish. So they can hide from predators. They can spawn without being eaten so quickly. And yes, that is true. A little bit of vegetation in a pond is a good thing. We don't want to see a pond that's just bare with no cover in it whatsoever. But too much vegetation can be a problem. And ideally, we like to see about 20% vegetation cover in a pond. That gives the sunfish and all the other bass forage some place to hide, but not too many places to hide. So excessive vegetation in a pond can cause a couple of issues. The one main issue we see, as far as our pond management goes, is that it inhibits the growth of the bass. If you've got too much vegetation, too many hiding places for prey. Bass have to work too hard. They expend too much energy trying to capture their prey and they don't grow as fast as they should. Now, another big problem with excessive vegetation in ponds, especially down here in the South, pond owners want to be able to fish their pond without 
running in the grass all the time having to pull the grass off their lure every single cast and in ponds like these where there's so much submerged vegetation you really can't fish the ponds effectively so a lot of pond owners want to remove some of that vegetation so that they can then enjoy their ponds they can fish in the ponds sometimes too much vegetation also makes the ponds hard to put a boat in now in this case we don't have a lot of surface vegetation but we've seen ponds where they're just covered in lily pads and it makes it almost it's impossible to run a trolling motor in those ponds and move around in them so the pleasure of the pond comes into play here you want the pond to be fishable you want it to be navigable by boat and that's why we want to reduce the amount of vegetation so that these owners can enjoy their ponds more so in these two ponds the vegetation we have present is some of this common rush right here it is not populous enough to be a problem at all really not worried about that there's also some filamentous algae out there in a few spots or what we call pond scum but it's not heavy enough to really worry about but the stuff to really worry about is this spike rush right here and it is covering the bottom of this pond as i told you earlier and this particular pond owner has actually hired a mechanical weed removal service to come in here several times to get rid of this slender spike rush but the problem with this weed is it reproduces via seed and via rhizomes so yeah you can go in there and cut it out but it's going to regrow really fast and so mechanical removal doesn't always work for every weed that we encounter and in the case of this spike rush it doesn't work very well at all now our guys in the airboat sprayer have already sprayed these two ponds here knocked it out pretty quick and they've headed out to do another job we really can't film while that airboat is running because it's so loud you wouldn't be able to hear me but we did get some good footage so let's roll that clip and then we'll talk more about vegetation control in ponds i can go to my countryside take some time remember night sitting by the fire leaning back watching the red sky sunset let those bare feet sway and swing feel that warm breeze in So as you can see from that footage there, there's kind of two different things we're doing when we spray a pond. We're first going around the perimeter with the spray gun, kind of treating the edge, and then we're spraying the subsurface vegetation. So the nice thing about that rig we have is that it has hoses and nozzles going down into the water so we can treat those weeds better, spray them more effectively by shooting it down into the water as opposed to just spraying the surface. And the stuff we spray is all safe to use. It's all approved aquatic herbicides. And in just a few days, you can get back in these ponds, swim, doesn't really do any harm to the fish. The only thing we have to be careful with is not spraying too much of a pond at one time because it can deplete the oxygen just a little bit. So we actually just sprayed half of each of these ponds today and we'll come back later and spray the other half in a few weeks. Now you also might be wondering why is spraying the only option? Aren't there other biological controls for vegetation in ponds and yes there are so let's talk about the different kind of methods for vegetation control in ponds so we have obviously mechanical removal which we talked about before that doesn't work with all weeds because some weeds have rhizomes down in the soil and they'll just grow back it does work with some it doesn't work with others that's pretty much a temporary fix and then we have the chemical control method, which is what we did here today. And this is a highly effective method when done right, when sprayed you know, below the water surface. And there's really not a whole lot of issues here. It doesn't pollute the water, doesn't really harm the fish. And in just a few days, once this stuff starts to break down, if you like to swim in your pond, you can get back in the water and enjoy it just as you were. And then we have the biological controls, which would be things like grass carp and also Having a really good plankton population in the pond can help suppress subsurface vegetation especially. So of those four types of controls, mechanical, chemical, biological with carp, biological with plankton, we use three of those. We don't use much mechanical controls with our pond management. We use chemical controls, we use carp, and we also try to manage vegetation by boosting the plankton populations. 
So in these two ponds, once we're able to kind of knock back this vegetation a little bit with the spraying program, we're actually planning on putting about 30 carp in this pond here behind me, and that will help keep the vegetation under control. But when it's full blown like it is now, we use an initial spraying to kind of knock it back, get it somewhat back under control, and then we let the carp do their thing. Now the main reason both of these ponds have such a vegetation issue currently has to do with the water clarity or the visibility. Now you really can't tell right now because that airboat tends to stir up the sediment a little bit, but these ponds are very, very clear. And when we shocked these ponds a couple weeks ago, you could see down in the water five foot or more in most places. So when we see ponds with really high visibility, really good water clarity, that tells us that the water is not very fertile and that there's also not a very strong plankton population present. Now on previous videos, we've talked about the importance of pond fertility, the importance of having a strong plankton population because that kind of forms the base of the pond food chain. And so what we like to see is kind of that green tint on the water. We don't want to see super clear water all the way down. We want to see that kind of greenish tint. That tells us there's a strong plankton population, which will feed the bluegill, which will then feed the bass. So once we get this vegetation under control via spraying, we'll add those carp. That's one biological control. And then we'll also fertilize this water, really stimulate those plankton populations, get them things to bloom, get a greenish tint on this water. And what that will do is actually shade the bottom of the pond. The reason this vegetation is thriving so much now, the water is so clear, the light penetration is so deep, and those plants, that subsurface vegetation is really thriving. If we can get that kind of green plankton layer on the surface of the pond, the light penetration isn't near as deep, the vegetation won't thrive, and we won't have near as many issues. And we see this in a lot of the ponds that we survey and manage. If it's a fertile pond near some type of agricultural source, there's usually not a lot of issues with vegetation. If it's a pond like these, where there's not a lot of agricultural sources nearby, it's not getting a lot of runoff from either livestock or farmland, then we need to supplement that fertility to boost those plankton populations. It's not only gonna feed the bluegill, but it's also gonna help with the vegetation. So hopefully after we come back in a couple weeks, spray the other half of both of these ponds, we're able to knock this stuff back pretty good and then just rely on those biological controls to keep the vegetation minimal. That's our goal here is to use the biological controls. We don't want to be out here spraying these ponds that frequently all the time. We just want to use that technique to knock it back initially and then take advantage of those biological techniques. And as a side note to the plankton and water visibility point, we get a lot of people messaging us saying, well, I want my water to be really clear in my backyard pond, but I also want it to be fertile so it can help stimulate the pond food chain. And it's really hard to have it both ways. You either have clear water that's not very fertile or you have fertile water that's got kind of that greenish tint to it. If you've got the fertile water, you're going to have good plankton, you're going to have healthy bluegill for the most part, and you should have healthy bass as a result. If you've got clear water, it's nice to swim in, it's pretty to look at, but you're going to have a lot of weed issues, and you're not feeding your bluegill with the plankton like you should. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video talking about vegetation control in pond today. And hopefully you understand now that it is a multifaceted approach. There's not one one size fits all solution. We try to do a number of things. And the goal here is to create kind of a self-maintaining system. So we're not having to constantly remove or spray for vegetation. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. If you're in the South Georgia or North Florida area and could benefit from our pond management services, whether that's population sampling, pond stocking, vegetation control, fertilization, any of that, you can go to our website, tlcperfectpond.com. There's a contact us form there. Fill that out. We'll get back with you and schedule a time to talk about your needs. So as far as these two ponds go, we're done here for the day. We'll see you guys on the next video. And until then, have a good one.